The next five videos will be covering section four, and all of them have to do with the if statement. And in English, we usually call this making decisions or selection statements or any type of situation where we have to make a decision uh, based on some information. So we're either going to do something or we're not going to do something based on some information that we have. And almost all of this revolves around a single construct in the programming language. And you'll see this in most programming languages called the if statement. I just wanted to show you this basic construct here before we start. This is the generic syntax of the if statement. Obviously you need to have the word if, which is a keyword in the C sharp language. Right after it you have to have enclosed in parentheses a boolean value. So in here there has to be some type of boolean value. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's a single value like a variable of type bool or a literal of type bool or um, an expression that is a boolean expression or a combination of a complicated expression so no matter what you decide to put inside of here it has to evalu evaluate down to a single boolean value so we call this the condition the condition goes inside of the parentheses and it has to be a boolean value no matter what. And based on the value of that boolean value it will either execute the instructions or not that exist between this begin and this end. So this reads if this condition is true then do the stuff inside of the begin and the end. So that's the if statement and it doesn't matter, you can have as many can, uh, instructions as you want in here. So you could have, it could keep going on and on and on. So let's say you have some variable called OK, that's a boolean variable, so. So this is the basic structure of the if statement, and what you have to understand is it's going to look at this condition before it decides whether or not to enter this block of code. This is the begin, this is the end. Um, you will not even see it hit this instruction if the condition is false. And if the condition is true, you will see it first hit the begin statement and then proceed to execute every instruction inside of the if statement. And it will also ins it will also execute this as an instruction, which means the if statement is over. So having said that, oh, I remember now. There was one other thing I wanted to say. Don't do this. No semicolon there allowed. And don't do that. No semicolons. There's no semicolons in an if statement. You might have some semicolons in here inside of your s instructions inside of the if statement. But the if statement itself, none of that and none of that. No if statement, or no semicolons in the if statement. Um, that seems to be a problem that a lot of new programmers have, putting semicolons where they shouldn't. Alright, so now, getting into example one. This is just a pure if statement example. So let's see what we have going on here. Uh, we have writing to the screen, enter a number, and then we read a string from the user. We turn it into an integer. So basically we've, we've got a number from the user. So let me just run this and we can play along with it. So it says enter a number. I'll type in the number 50, or how about 40. So what happened on the screen was it said I'm inside the first if block and the number is larger than 10. So having remembered that, let's continue on reading over here. So after I got this number from the user, I have an if statement and I say if the number that the user typed in is greater than 10, which it just was, I want to execute th these three lines of code. So a space, it, and then type out the words inside the first if block, and then type out the words the number is larger than 10. And then the next line of code was line 18, and it would come down here and say, if input integer is larger than 100, well, the number that I entered that time was 40. So the next line of code actually would be 
here because since this condition was false it's going to completely skip over that part so let's let's debug through that again the same exact situation so do that do that read my number I type in 40 again so let's watch this go one step at a time so I have my number let's view our locals view Oops, debug windows locals. And down here, please. Okay, so I have my number is input integer is 40. If input integer, which is 40, as I see when I hover over it, is greater than 10, so that condition is going to be true. So when I hit F10 or step over, the next line of code should be line 12 which it is. So you'll never hit line 12 if this condition was false. So the, seeing that we hit line 12 means that this condition was true. This boolean value ended up being true. So it's going to execute these three lines, which are just right lines. And I see those on the screen. Now this next one is the interesting one that we didn't really see. This time it says, is 40 greater than 100? and that is obviously false. So from line 18 if we step over the next line of code is line 25 so it completely skipped over lines 19 through 23 and that's the kind of key functionality of the if statement. It can completely ignore and skip over some code based on information or based on a condition. And this is another condition if the input integer is greater than a thousand well 40 is not greater than 1000 so skip that one too. And then I had another condition down here that said it's a more complicated expression. It says if the input integer is greater than or equal to 50 and its input integer is less than or equal to 60. So 40 is not greater than or equal to 50. And this is an and. So if either side of the and is false, it's false. So we don't even have to look any further because 40 is not greater than or equal to 50. This left side of the and will be false. Therefore, the whole and will be false and it will skip over and then my program is over. So let's do something more interesting than that. Let's write, let's do a really big number this time. So let's ask for my number. This time I'll write 9999. So I have my number. I can see down here it's 9999. So this time, not this condition will be true, so it will enter there and write those three things to the screen. This condition will also be true, it will enter there and write those thing, three things to the screen. This condition will be true, it will enter there, all those three things will be written to the screen. As I can see over here in my output, all of the stuff from those three blocks happened. But then this one, uh, 9999, is greater than 50, that's true, but it also has to be less than 60, and 9999 is not less than 60. So that will be false, we'll skip over that one, and that will be it. That will be done. So that's the end of that. So I'll do it one more time to try to get this one to enter. So this, it's for, for it to enter this if statement, I need to enter a number that's both greater than or equal to 50 and less than or equal to 60. So in other words, it has to be between 50 and 60. So I'll try the number 55. So I'll go 55. I can see my number is 55. 55 is greater than 10, so I will get this if statement entered. But these two will be skipped because 55 is not greater than 100, and it's not greater than 1,000. But now this time, 55 is greater than 50 and 55 is less than or equal to 60, so it will come in here and say the number is between 50 and 60, and once again I'm done. So you can see I had um, a number of situations that I wanted to test, a number of conditions that I wanted to test, and these can be whatever you want. This is just an example to show you that uh, every if statement is a single block of code. It's a single instruction um, in and of itself. And if the condition is true, it will enter the if block and then proceed to execute all the instructions inside. But if it's false, it will 
skip over it entirely. So in a way, the if statement is is one instruction. It'll say if if this condition is false, just keep going and skip everything. But also in a way, it's more than one instruction because if the condition happens to be true, it will enter inside of, of what we call a new scope. So it will enter in basically inside of this uh, begin and end and start executing all the instructions inside of there. So that's the basics of the if statement. It's r well not well not really, but pretty simple. <laughs> uh, I think most people find it pretty simple w until it starts getting more complicated in the next probably I don't know. Once you start nesting things, then it starts getting hard. But uh, for the first three videos here, if if else and if else if, it shouldn't be too bad. So this is the first one. Uh, I'm going to stop it here and. Then I'll go on to example two in the next video.